Hey everybody, Carson from Top and Go Productions here, and thanks for watching another episode of The Other 99. Today we're taking a look at a mono-black recursion deck with Shirei Shizo's Caretaker as a general, built by Reiki Isha. Shirei Shizo's Caretaker is a recursion engine that only requires two things, dying creatures, and those dying creatures to have a power one or less when they do die. She may be expensive at 5 mana, but Shirei can use the advantage all those tiny creatures create to deprive your opponents of resources. Since Shirei isn't the cheapest general in the world, if you want her on the board early in the game, you'll need some ramp. Mana Vault, Soul Ring, and Ancient Tomb. Accelerate into your Shirei and other spells. Untaidake, the Cloud Keeper, can lead to turn 3 Shirei. Dark Ritual, one-shot mana acceleration to ramp out your general or put that Exsanguinate over the edge. Blood Pet, enables early Shirei and provides a constant source of extra mana when she's out. Ramping into Shirei is great, but if you want her to stick around so you can get use out of all those tiny little creatures, she'll need some protection. Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves keep Shirei safe from spot removal. Darksteel Plate ensures Shirei won't die to a sweeper. Nim Death Mantle. Four mana to get your general back is much better than playing five plus whatever general tax. Sack Outlets are the bread and butter of this deck, since waiting for your creatures to die normally won't get you as much value. Spawning Pit. It's a free sack outlet that lets you make extra creatures to block with. The Saraseer lets you use creatures to dig through your library. Bloodflow Connoisseur, a free sack outlet that becomes a huge beat stick. Ashnod's Altar, we've established that free sack outlets are great, but free mana puts this one over the edge. Disciple of Grizzlebrand and Gutless Ghoul, they are one cost sack outlets that give you a life boost. Thought Picker Witch, it can remove your opponent's best threats. Attrition. It's repeatable creature removal. Soldevi Adnate turns creatures into mana. Braid's Cabal Minion will wreck your opponent's board positions while providing a handy sack outlet for you. There are a lot of powerful cards in this deck, so you want a way to get them. Diabolic Revelation and Increasing Ambition. They can find a lot of cards. Diabolic Content. It's a cheap tutor and a one-shot sack outlet. Underworld Connections. A Phyrexian Arena that lets you choose when to lose life for cards. Scarecrone and Mindless Automaton. Self-sacrificing draw power is ridiculous with Shrey out. Necropotence. Because this deck just wouldn't be complete without more broken cards. These dudes will keep the shenanigans rolling after your opponents blow up your sack engines. Bottle Gnomes. Gaining life is good, and in a 4-player game you'll gain 12 life between each of your turns, which is helpful if you have Necropotence on the board. Crypt Rats. It can deal damage to everyone between turns, which is a good way to end the game if you have the highest life total. Death Cultist. Gaining 4 life every turn cycle is good. Having 4 damage to spread out as you please is even better. This deck is all about making your creatures die over and over, so why not get even more value out of them? Black Market. An enchantment opponents will have to answer if they don't want to lose the game. Pawn of Ulamog. Gets mana and blockers. Vulcan Wrath Noble and Blood Artist. They're a source of damage and life gain when creatures die, and Blood Artist is a charade target. Skier's Dag High Priest makes big, scary demon tokens. Mortician Beetle, a one-mana creature that gets huge. Scavenger Drake, a flying beater that, unlike Mortician Beetle, triggers when anything dies, no matter how. Grave Pact and Butcher of Malakir, when your creatures die, so will everyone else's. Urborg Justice, a one-shot Grave Pact effect to wipe someone's field after you've sacrificed yours. Bone Shredder. It's self-sacrificing removal that comes back with Shirei. Reaper from the Abyss. It will probably kill something every turn. Harvester of Souls. It turns all those dying creatures into cards, which means more creatures and more shenanigans. Most of this deck isn't typical mono black, but it's still good at making a lot of mana, so you might as well have some big mana black win cons. Exsanguinate. Kills the whole table in one swoop. Profane Command. Kill a creature, recur one of your own, kill a player, or give all of your creatures evasion. Maga, traitor to mortals. An next damage spell that leaves you with a big beater. Winning the game is great and all, but sometimes you need to keep from losing first. Wall of Shadows, a champion blocker that can defend you all day long. Wall of Souls, people don't like being smacked by their own creatures. Watchdog, makes the creatures attacking you a little less scary. Mutilate, a board wipe that says, who cares if your stuff is indestructible? Life's Finale, a wrath effect that dumps creatures in graveyards. You're abusing your graveyard a lot, but it would just be silly to let your opponents do the same. Heap Doll, self-sacrificing graveyard hate that keeps coming back. Carrion Beetles, 
normally creatures or what is being abused. Marrow Bone Gnar is good in a deck that has so many cheap black creatures. Sheree is very powerful, which is why you need to make sure you have a backup plan if she gets tucked or killed too often. Morgue Theft gets two creatures back. Cadaver Imp, good with Sheree or if she's not around. Micaeus the Unhallowed. With Micaeus out, very few of your creatures will be Sheree targets, but that's fine, because he's Sheree backup for when she's tucked or too expensive to recast. This deck wouldn't be complete without some random utility and stuff. Karn Liberated and Steel Hellkite. They give you ways to deal with enchantments and other hard to remove permanents. Lash Wrythe. I don't always attack, but when I do, I prefer to attack with 19 swamps on the board and a Lash Wrythe equipped to Sheree for lethal commander damage. Coffin Queen. A reanimator that happens to be a Sheree target. Guilt Feeder. Graveyards get big in EDH, so having a creature with evasion that punishes people for big graveyards is handy. Sorceress Queen can make big beaters insignificant, but is best in this deck because she can make creatures that aren't normally charade targets come back. And for the deck's lands, Cabal Coffers, Urborg Tube of Yogmoth, Reliquary Tower, Strip Mine, and 31 Swamps. For the strengths and weaknesses of the deck, for its strengths, because the power of your creatures isn't readily apparent, you can kind of fly under the radar. Few non-basics, so cards like Blood Moon and Ruination don't hurt too much. It can affect the board even on other people's turns. It can lock down the entire table over the course of just a few turns. The weaknesses. The deck is much weaker without Sheree on the board. Too many wrath effects can slow you down. It can't deal with powerful artifacts and enchantments. Graveyard hate really hurts. You should play this deck if you like a deck that requires skill and thought to pilot, you like playing with your graveyard, you like winning with tiny underwhelming creatures, you like ramp and black, but not enough to play tons of mana doublers. Thanks for watching this episode of The Other 99. This charade deck takes all those 1x creatures that may usually be weaker in Commander and turns them into something to be feared. For next time, vote on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for either Zyra Arian, Mistform Ultimus, or Olivia Boldarin. I'm Karsten with Top Go Productions, and as always, thanks for watching.